Hello and welcome back. My name is Matthew Bingham. And this is MB Tech, and tonight we're going to be going over how to install uh, a golden image in Proxmox. Uh, Proxmox is basically a virtualization environment that I use here for the home lab. Um, very powerful, very you know easy to use. I think um, you know you can throw it on pretty much anything, and you know build your images that you want to have uh, for your own home lab or any type of uh, systems that you might want for other types of things throughout. Uh, your house that you may want to use for streaming or video uh, NVR that you can do as well for uh, recordings and stuff like that. Um, so we will go and this is just how to create a basic uh, what we'll call gold image if you will of CentOS 7. You can do it for CentOS 8 as well, Ubuntu uh, 17, 18, any, any version really. Um, as long as you have the ISO in your uh, Proxmox server uh, then it's not an issue. Uh, for example here's the Proxmox and if we go to storage, um, we can see local PBE and our content. These are the ISOs that I have. Um, you can have any any type of one that you want. You know, there's CentOS 6, 7, 8, uh, Debian, and then there's Ubuntu 18 and uh, 19. Um, so like I said, you, you decide what ISO you want to use, and you can pretty much build an image from it. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a CentOS 7 image. So we need to make sure that this information is correct in our config file more than anything. Um, but first off, let's talk a little bit about Packer. Uh, it's an automation machine image. Um, therefore, it can create this, can automatically uh, install YUM updates. It can automatically add the uh, client. Like if you're doing it for VMware, you can do it with, so that it takes a VMware client in there. Um, I'm actually doing it for Proxmox, so it's actually going to install the Proxmox uh, client in there as well, um, which is kind of a... Uh, interesting and good because it actually tells you information like what IP address and stuff like that. If you don't have the agent on there, um, then it will not show that information. Um, so let's go in a little bit further than that. Uh, once you get uh, Packer installed, uh, all the information is here, pretty much how to get it installed. You can go to the download. Obviously, you're going to select your Linux. You're going to download it. Then the installation instructions are there as well. And I'll put a link to uh, where you can get this information from. Uh, it's pretty seamless, and once you get it installed, it's it's, it's pretty uh, self-explanatory, but I just want to have that information uh, in the uh, summary of, of this video. Um, so there's a little bit of information about uh, Packer. It's part of HashiCorp. Um, it seems to be a good product uh, for that part of it. And then here is uh, different uh, information, I guess, for the builder part of it. So this is for Proxmox. This is the Proxmox Builder. It gives us our configuration reference, and then it tells you all the information that you're going to need. You know, the URL to your Proxmox server, username, password, node, ISO file, which I mentioned earlier, where it's located, what type of storage you're using, checksums, and you have all these optional information as well that you can put in there. And like I said, this is on the Packer uh, site uh, for, for Proxmox itself. Um, so this information will be below as well. Um, from this information, uh, I was actually searching for some uh, locations and there's two different GitHubs and I'll post those uh, as well. And this is a CentOS Packer build for Proxmox. Um, so all you need to do is go to and get this repo using Git. Um, you'll download that and then you can install from the uh, uh, locations that they have. Uh, once you uh, use the uh, Git command and make a clone of it. Um, and then for the uh, Ubuntu, here's another location that I'll add as well. And this is the Packer for Ubuntu Proxmox template uh, with that information that you'll need for that. Um, so you need a build system. So you'll need a system and usually it's best to have it pretty much on the same network uh, area as your actual Proxmox server. It doesn't have to be the same exact network segment as long as they can communicate. That works as well too. Um, so we need to have one of those. Um, so I have what I call my control box. Uh, this is my uh, control box right here. It's just the regular CentOS image. Um, as we can see, it is 7.6. Okay, from here we can go, and I'll do a list real quick, and you can see that I've got the two different uh, things that I brought down from GitHub, Proxmox Packer and the Pro uh, Packer Ubuntu. Uh, we're going to go into the uh, Proxmox Packer. Do a quick list. And we see that there's a CentOS 7 and a CentOS 8. Um, 
and uh, readme file for that. So we can do a cat of the readme. And it basically goes in and tells information on what you need to do. You know, first of all, make sure you have the ISO, uh, a working Proxmox system, which we have Packer, which I gave that information where to get that. The builder machine must be accessible from the Proxmox. I must host the KS file itself. Okay, the OS ISO, which we've got. And then to build the image, you'll first want to determine if your host is running Packer can access the Proxmox host. Um, we've got that. Here's the information we're going to need. Uh, name of the Proxmox node, username, password, URL, and then the uh, Packer JSON uh, for that. And then for CentOS 7, 8, it would be the same thing, although you would use the CentOS 8 Packer.json for there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to run the 7. So I'll clear this up real quick. So as I mentioned, uh, you'll want to go into the Proxmox Packer directory. From there, you're actually going to want to run Packer, um, build, then your variable. As I mentioned, I use Packer.io as a link to Packer, because um, I believe I had a conflict with Packer as another package as well, so that's why I did that. Um, and then basically the Proxmox node, the name, so you can see the name over here is uh, PVE. And then you can see Proxmox username is going to be root at pan. That's what I'm using. Then the var Proxmox password. Um, that will be your password that you use for there. And then your Proxmox URL, which is the HTTPS API JSON, and then the uh, Packer JSON that you're going to need. So if you see 10.14.5.806 is my Proxmox uh, server IP address as well for my uh, virtual environment. Um, once that's done, uh, you've used that line, you're just going to hit enter. And right now it is kicking off the uh, Proxmox created a VM. Uh, no idea was given, so it's getting the next free Proxmox. It's starting the VM, it's starting the HTTP server on the port, and it's waiting to test sex for boot. And if we look down here on our uh, actual uh, Proxmox server, you can see that it created this one here, 701. And we're actually going to watch it on the console go through its setup. Right now it's currently checking the image and it's almost done. And now it's starting to do the uh, installation from the uh, uh, Anaconda. Back on our build system, we can see that it's uh, typing, you know, the boot command. Now it's waiting for an SSH to become available. And as we can tell, the system is going through into an installation, so it will not be available. But once this is finished, then it'll be able to SSH into this box. Okay, the system's rebooting. And as you can see, actually, I know this top line there is it's running the latest and greatest kernel. It's booting up, so we should be able to see an SSH here. This is once again from the control station where we ran the uh, packer from. And it's going in, it connected. It's provisioning of the shell script. It's loading the plugins. It's doing all the stuff that it needs to do. So this is from the control station, as I mentioned. And this is the actual image just sitting there waiting at SSH prompt. Okay, it's removed the password for user, it's uh, stopping the VM and converting the VM to a template. And it says build finished, the artifacts are successful, builds are approximate, a template was created, 701. So if we look over here at 701, we can see that we have a template that is ready to be deployed within our uh, Proxmox uh, server. Um, one thing that we do need to do uh, since this was set up, we're going to actually have to uh, add a cloud in it uh, parameter here because there's nothing here right now. Um, so we can we can add that. Uh, so basically, just go to the template here, 
Um, go to hardware, go to add, cloud init drive. It's going to be real small. IDE is fine. Uh, storage is going to be the local VM. I'll say create. So we now have that uh, cloud init drive added. And then now it's actually asking for the uh, information for that, that user itself. Uh, so for this one here, for instance, we're going to do the user. We're going to change that. And we're going to make the user CentOS, let's say. CentOS will be our user. Passwords are going to be none. Our SSH public key. I actually have one. Uh, so we're going to go command off here. I know this is a Windows box, but I still have one here. And here we've got the uh, ID RSA pub. So I will cat that. Oh, I'm sorry, notepad. Um, and I'm going to edit and I'm going to select all, copy, and I'm going to paste that into this key. Click OK. So now we've got a public key. We've got our user CentOS as a cloud init drive on this actual template that we have here. Um, so now it's time to build, if you will, or basically create from this template a CentOS box. So that's easy enough. We uh, right click and we clone. And we'll let this be 100. That's fine. This is going to be test CentOS 07. And we'll do a full clone. And we'll let that build out. And it's going to be built. And we'll go up here and we're going to start. So it is now ready uh, for us to log in through the uh, cloud init. And cloud init has finished installing its information with the SSH keys and all that good stuff. So now if we go back to the summary, we can see what the IP address is, 192.168.1.132. We'll go back to my command prompt. And okay, now we are going to SSH to the box. CentOS is the username 192.168.1.132. And we are now in this box right here. So if we do a cat Etsy. Or at least we'll see that we're running at 7.2.8. It's got the latest and greatest. If we do a yum update, or check update even, there is nothing to update. So everything's been updated. Um, has all the information that we wanted to be installed in there, so everything looks good um, from this perspective.
see there's no updates because it didn't update when it was creating the template. So everything is up to date, latest and greatest on this box for running 7.8. Um, just so you can see from this perspective as well, in Proxmox, I'm in this box, I'm going to shut it down and we'll see that this test CentOS box is powered off. I'm going to change to root. And I'm going to send the shutdown command so that we can see that we are actually on that box. And this box here should go to being powered off. And it's powered off. Hope you enjoyed this. Again, my name is Matthew Bingham with MB Tech, and I hope you enjoyed this. If you have questions or other things that you'd like me to go over, I'll be more than glad to or try to get as much as I can. I hope you enjoyed the channel. If you would, please like, subscribe, and we'll see you again.